So here we are at Monina Central Russian Air Force Museum outdoor exhibition and we start with the MiL MI-12 world's heaviest helicopter which actually set the world for world's uh, weightlifting record that was never never beaten is here at the entrance. So here we start with Tupolev, uh, Tupolev 24, which is a copy paste of the USB-29 Stratofortress. So this is the Soviet heavy long-range bomber from 1950s. Still uh, not a jet bomber, as you can see. At every bomber there would be examples of the weapons that it would carry, bombs and missiles. Next one is uh, Tupolev 216. It's already a jet bomber. And then we go to Tupolev's uh, 22s, which are still in service with the, with the Russian Air Force uh, in the Navy. Long-range jet bombers uh, designed to carry anti-ship missiles. So here they are, different versions of it. Uh, so here is the basic 222. Then the later versions, and well, the later versions are still in service, mostly being upgraded with new electronic equipment, navigation equipment and so on. Here in this museum there are also tons of experimental vehicles that never saw service. So this is 222M and we go on to the next one. is 216K. Here is uh, the world's only strike and uh, reconnaissance aircraft Su Suhoi Su-100 or T-4 and uh, it's actually made from steel and titan but uh, well it was too expensive even for the Soviet Union to build something like this so this is a unique aircraft M-50 Messi Chef Experimental Design Bureau. This is a real monstrous plane. And uh, again, this is uh, an experimental aircraft, so there were no others. With the uh, Suhoi SU 100 in the background, here is Yakolev 130, a light training jet and uh, a light uh, ground, assault air, air, ground assault aircraft. And then we go to uh, Yak-23, designed as early as, as uh, 1947. A single-seater jet fighter. Then we have uh, Yak-25 interceptor from 1952. And then Yak 25R. R stands for Razvechik or a reconnaissance plane. And the next Yaks here in the queue are Yak 27, high speed reconnaissance aircraft. and another version of the same aircraft, or actually that's uh, Yak-28, a frontline or short-range bomber. More Yaks, uh, Yak-36, an experimental vertical takeoff and landing. Never so service, but then we go to the, the only vertical takeoff and landing aircraft produced in the Soviet Union, Yak-38, used by the Soviet Navy. 
here they are a couple of those one of them is with the uh, folded wings So much for the yak planes, and we go to MiG aircraft fighters. Uh, here we have MiG-15 uh, UTI, the training two-seater jet. That's exactly the jet type on which uh, Yuri Gagarin, the first man to fly into space, crashed. And then we go to MiG-17 frontline jet fighter. And then MiG-19 Interceptor. And then moving to a bit more modern stuff that is still being used by some air forces in this planet. MiG-21s. And then we go with uh, MiG-23s, multi-purpose fighters, then there is an amphibious uh, BE-200 in the background and there is this huge reconnaissance and bomber plane MiG-25 then we go to MiG-27 a fighter bomber and then the big one MiG-31, the interceptor that could actually go into, almost into stratosphere, or actually almost go into space. So this is the bigger and upgraded version of uh, MiG-25. And uh, here is MiG-21I. Is actually a flying laboratory for uh well sorry this is mig 29 of course and mig 21i is the analog of this uh huge tupolev 244 supersonic jet Uh, you can see that most of the aircraft are here exposed to all the elements and are in a very shabby condition. So actually there is a team of volunteers here in Monina Museum that is uh, painting, cleaning and generally restoring the 244. The very first supersonic passenger liner in the world, but again, really expensive to use and a uh, bad story of crushes so eventually taking out of service like the Concorde we continue here in Monina and uh, here is a row of experimental aircraft that actually never entered service here is the world's uh, first supersonic vertical takeoff and landing aircraft Yakovlev Yak-141 developed very late in the Soviet history back in 1987 so it actually never saw service then here is Lavochkin uh, La 250 the supersonic uh, fighter jet the interceptor back from 1956 but this aircraft lost competition to the other designs so again it remained one piece build, experimental aircraft. Then there is the next E166, the record breaker, designed by Mikayan or MiG. Also, just to test the engine, test the aerodynamics, and so on. From uh, 1961, actually. It broke the speed and height records of that time. And then behind all this you can see the tail of Tupolev 295, the bear, the heavy bomber that is still in service. And uh, another interesting vehicle, 
Epos 1976. This was the Soviet aircraft designed to test the shuttle system. As you might remember, the Soviet Union developed their own multi-launch and landing system, which is called Buran, or translated into English, the Blizzard. So actually this small shuttle would be dropped from the height of uh, 5,500 meters from the carrier plane, which would be the Tupolev 295, the bear, just to test the aerodynamics of it. And um, it is pretty old, as old as 1976. So this was actually a pioneer of that time. And then the next interesting aircraft here, actually it's not an aircraft, it's a, it's a drone from 1974, Tupolev uh, 2141 Strij. So this is a reconnaissance drone, which is jet propelled, launched by a vehicle like this. So uh, here it is, it has cameras in front, nose, the height that it could operate at is uh, 50 to 600 meters would have range of 1,000 kilometers and of course you might ask how would it land because it actually doesn't have the landing gear, it doesn't have the chassis. It would be landing with a parachute. So again these days uh, drones are used by most air forces of this world and this was just an experimental vehicle back from uh, 1960s.